Good evening, and welcome to another bone-chilling episode of Our Scary Stories. I'm your host, guiding you through the twilight and into a world where nightmares take shape, and the ordinary transforms into the extraordinary. Tonight, we venture into the heart of a merciless storm, trapped in a remote cabin with a group of mountaineers. A creeping paranoia takes hold, a chilling tale becomes their grim reality, and the boundaries of fear and sanity blur. What happens when survival calls for unthinkable choices? When the whispers of an ancient monster echo in every gust of the blizzard. Ladies and gentlemen, wrap yourselves tighter in your blankets, check the locks on your doors, and prepare yourselves for revelations of the Wendigo. In the raw heart of the Canadian wilderness, the wind sang a mournful tune. Far below its gusty peaks, five mountaineers, Marcus, Sarah, Derek, Audrey, and Liam, pressed onward, their breaths frosting in the bitter air. Marcus, their appointed leader, took the first steps, breaking the freshly fallen snow. His heart was a determined drum against his ribs, his spirit unbroken by the daunting sight of the monstrous peak ahead. Whispers of snowflakes fell gently from the heavens, as if the sky was a blank canvas, and nature was its devoted artist. The mountain loomed in the background, shrouded in an enigmatic mist, its peak invisible. Their goal was clear and unyielding, they would conquer it. Or at least, that was the plan before the gathering storm. As the afternoon wore on, the whispers turned into shouts, and the wind howled with a fury that threatened to sweep them off their feet. Flakes as big as feathers descended, carpeting the rough, uneven terrain, and the temperature dropped with an uncanny swiftness. The chill was bone deep, gnawing at them like a starved beast, and their breaths came out in white plumes. We can't go further, Sarah yelled, her words almost swallowed by the wind. She was the most experienced among them, her instincts honed by many daring climbs. Marcus gave her a grim nod, squinting against the snowstorm. The visibility was rapidly decreasing, and the reality of their situation was sinking in, heavy as the snowflakes around them. There's a cabin a half mile down, Audrey called out. She was a local, a fire-haired spitfire, who knew this terrain like the back of her hand. The thought of a warm shelter against the onslaught of this white hell brought them a spark of hope. They trudged on, led by Audrey, their boots sinking deep into the snow, every step a battle against the storm's fury. The cabin materialized out of the white veil, a solitary haven amidst the swirling chaos. It was a quaint structure, made of aged wood, which had weathered many storms. The sight spurred them on, pushing through the gale, one aching step after another. The snow under their feet crunched, a familiar sound that was oddly comforting amidst the roar of the wind. Once inside, they barricaded the door against the storm, their breaths loud and labored in the suddenly quiet space. The interior was sparse, two rooms filled with rugged, wooden furniture, and a fireplace that promised warmth. Marcus set to work on lighting a fire, his hands sure and steady, despite the chill that still clung to them. As the first flames licked the logs, throwing a warm, Flickering light around the room, they shed their heavy coats, wet and snow-laden. The cabin was gradually filling with the scent of burning wood, of safety and survival. Yet, beyond its log walls, the storm raged with renewed vigor, each gust a shrieking reminder of the wilderness they were trapped in. Guests were staying the night, Liam said, his usual humor dimmed by their circumstance. His words hung in the air, a stark reminder of their predicament, each syllable a ghost that would haunt them in the hours to come. Little did they know how long the night would be, or what the storm would bring with it, aside from snow. Fear, they would learn, was a more potent chill than any blizzard could provide. And the cold was just beginning to bite. As the blizzard raged outside, the world inside the cabin began to shrink. The wooden walls, bathed in the warm glow of the fireplace, guarded them against the onslaught of the storm. But within the confines of safety, a different beast began to stir. While the fire crackled and danced, battling the chilling drafts that crept under the door and through the gaps in the old log walls, the team huddled close. Hunger gnawed at their stomachs, a grim reminder of their dwindling supplies. Audrey handed out meager portions of canned food, and they ate in silence. The storm's roar and the fire's soft crackle their only soundtrack. With food settled in their stomachs, unease took its place. Sarah was the first to break the silence, her voice a low hum against the storm's icy anthem. Tell us a story, Audrey, she suggested, seeking a distraction from the enclosing walls and the white terror that lay beyond. Audrey hesitated, her eyes reflecting the firelight, shadows flickering over her face. Not sure I know any that would lighten the mood, she admitted, her tone full of foreboding. Derek scoffed. 
A story is a story. Can't be worse than being stuck in the storm. And so Audrey began. Her voice wove a tale from the threads of their setting, the legend of the Wendigo, a creature of local folklore. It was born from a human committing the most unthinkable sin, cannibalism, and was forever cursed with an insatiable hunger for human flesh. The Wendigo was a ghoul of winter. It thrived in the biting cold, and the locals whispered that it could summon storms to trap its prey. The fire seemed to flicker more ominously as she narrated, casting grotesque shadows that danced on the walls. The wind outside howled, almost as if mimicking the Wendigo's call. The comfortable warmth within the cabin twisted into an oppressive heat, a stark contrast to the icy tail. Marcus, his face made angular by the shifting flames, stared into the fire, his eyes distant, lost in the horrific imagery. Liam shifted uneasily, his gaze darting between the others and the cabin's small windows, now shrouded in a curtain of white. Sarah listened with a silent, stony expression, while Derek's face reflected skepticism. That's just an old wives tale, Derek scoffed once Audrey finished, the silence that followed her words a heavy, choking fog. A story meant to keep people from resorting to desperate measures in desperate times. Audrey shrugged, a ghost of a smile on her lips. Maybe it is, but remember, every legend has its roots in truth. They retired to their sleeping bags that night, the storm still raging outside, the Wendigo's tail chilling their bones more than the frosty drafts. As they lay in the dim firelight, the cabin creaking under the storm's weight, the silence was no longer a welcome reprieve but a stage for their racing thoughts. Their dreams were haunted, not just by the Wendigo, but by the storm that continued its relentless symphony. Each gust seemed to whisper the creature's name, each chilling draft a ghostly finger tracing their spines. Their waking world was defined by frost and fear, and now, their dreams offered no refuge. The stage was set, the curtain lifted, and the true terror was only beginning. The morning arrived without fanfare, heralded not by a gentle sunrise, but by a softening of the storm's relentless roar. Marcus was the first to wake, his dreams scattered by the unfamiliar silence. A blizzard had receded, leaving in its wake a world turned pristine white. He looked out of the frost-rhymed window, the view obscuring the fierce wilderness that lurked beyond. Every tree, every boulder was a shapeless silhouette swathed in a blanket of snow. While the others still slept, wrapped in the deceptive comfort of their sleeping bags, Marcus wrestled with the heavy cabin door. It finally gave way, reluctantly, and he stepped out into a world reborn. The snow was knee-deep, a frigid barrier challenging each step he took. The once familiar landscape was now a featureless expanse, the world beyond the immediate vicinity a blurred mystery. His breath plumed out in front of him, every exhalation a stark reminder of the biting cold. The silence was absolute, the world holding its breath, the storm's rage just a memory. The rest of the group joined him, their faces mirroring his concern. Their intended destination, the treacherous peak, was now an obscured dream in the distance. There was no path forward. And, as Audrey discovered when she tried the radio, no connection to the world outside. They were truly alone. Days melted into nights, and still, the storm showed no mercy. Their isolation became their universe, the cabin walls the boundary of their existence. The fire's warmth became a precious commodity, and they huddled around it, like worshippers before a sacred flame. Food was rationed strictly, each meal a clock ticking down towards an uncertain future. The wind, now a constant companion, whispered incessantly, its voice mingling with the crackling fire and their low, hushed conversations. In the quiet hours, when the fire was reduced to glowing embers and their own thoughts turned loud, Audrey's tale of the Wendigo echoed in their minds. Every howl of the wind, every groan of the cabin was the creature's call, an eerie serenade that underscored their growing unease. They had come to conquer the mountain. Instead, they found themselves at the mercy of the storm prisoners in a realm where the Wendigo was the jailer. Their initial bravado, their sense of adventure, all faded under the relentless passage of time and the growing hunger that stirred within them. Outside, the world remained a hauntingly beautiful nightmare, white and endless. Inside, the cabin became their world, their haven, and their prison, each passing day another tally on the walls of their confinement. The snowbound silence hit a crescendo of fear, the sense of dread growing, a chilling refrain to the relentless storm outside. The frosty morning brought with it a cruel realization. The storm was not going to relent anytime soon. With every passing hour, the cabin seemed to shrink, its wooden walls closing in, 
the warmth from the dwindling fire a poor defense against the creeping chill of despair. The snow-laden world outside remained indifferent, a stark white canvas undisturbed by the drama unfolding within the cabin. Marcus, brooding in the silence of the early morning, found himself drawn to the small window. As he peered out into the blinding whiteness, he froze. For an instant, he thought he saw a large, hulking figure in the swirling snow, an aberration amidst the blanket of white. But as quickly as it appeared, it was swallowed by the storm, leaving him questioning his own weary eyes. Hallucinations, that's what hunger does to you, Derek snapped, when Marcus shared his sighting. He was standing near the fire, his hands stretched out, absorbing the meager heat. His tone was dismissive, but his darting eyes betrayed a flicker of fear. Sarah, however, was more empathetic, her voice calm and soothing. We're all on edge, Marcus. It's probably the storm playing tricks. But her attempt to reassure him did little to ease the tension that had fallen over the group. Even Liam, usually the jest of their party, was unusually silent. As day gave way to night, an uncomfortable routine set in. Their conversations, once filled with laughter and shared experiences, now revolved around the harsh reality of their predicament and the disturbing lore Audrey had shared. A Wendigo, once just a character in an eerie tale, had become an unwelcome presence in their minds, its shadow cast over every nervous glance and hushed conversation. The nights were the worst. The wind, now a nightly serenade, took on a sinister note after dark. Their imaginations turned the howling gusts into the Wendigo's voice, its gnarled hand rapping on their door, the harsh scraping of its claws against their refuge. Sleep became a battleground, their dreams a twisted realm where the Wendigo reigned. With the dwindling firelight casting long, monstrous shadows, and the storm's symphony their lullaby, the line between reality and nightmare blurred. Each creak of the cabin, each rustle of their sleeping bags was a monster lurking in the dark every gust of wind a spectral wail. The fear was a chilling undercurrent, its icy tendrils creeping under their skin, gripping their hearts in a vice. In the heart of the storm, inside their shelter-turned-prison, the seeds of dread sprouted, fed by the cold, the hunger, and the eerie tale of the Wendigo. As the shadows danced and the storm continued to whisper its bone-chilling lullaby, the mountaineers grappled with a terror that was becoming all too real. The monster was no longer just a figment of their imagination. It was slowly coming alive in the confinement of their fears, in the heart of the relentless storm. The passing days were etched not only in the dwindling log pile, the meager rations, and the talus scratched into the wooden cabin wall, but also in the hollow cheeks and haunted eyes of the mountaineers. Food, once a pleasure, now became a precious commodity, each bite a luxury that echoed in their empty stomachs. Hunger took hold of them, its gnawing presence a constant reminder of their dire situation. Their bodies began to grow weaker, their minds clouded by an ever-present haze. Their conversation stilled, replaced by the haunting hymn of their growling stomachs. One morning, their scant breakfast portions seemed even smaller than before, and the group, despite their weakening state, noticed. Suspicion, like a vicious undercurrent, stirred among them. An unspoken accusation hung in the air, a testament to their escalating desperation. The tension reached a breaking point when Liam discovered his ration granola bar missing. Accusations flew thick and fast, trust shattered under the weight of the betrayal. Derek, his eyes darting with an unnatural intensity, bore the brunt of it. His protests fell on deaf ears as a deep-seated paranoia took root within each of them. A strange noise broke their escalating quarrel. It came from outside, a scratching sound against the wooden walls of the cabin. Marcus, still weary from his earlier sighting, went to the window, his heart pounding. But all he saw was the relentless dance of snowflakes, the world outside a relentless sea of white. Was it the Wendigo come to claim them? Or was it just another trick of the storm, another stab at their already frayed sanity? Every gust of wind, every moan of the cabin seemed to echo with Audrey's tale. The Wendigo was no longer a character in a story, it was becoming their reality, a grim specter that haunted their waking hours and tormented their dreams. The cabin, once their haven, was now a stage where their worst fears played out, each shadow a lurking monster, each noise a harbinger of doom. The once hardy and determined mountaineers were slowly transforming, their will worn thin by hunger, fear, and the ceaseless storm outside. They were no longer in a battle against the elements, they were in a battle against their own creeping fears, their sanity the price of survival. As the days blurred into a monotonous timeline of cold and hunger, the idea of keeping watch was proposed. 
It was Sarah, the ever-practical one, who suggested it. The decision was motivated not only by the growing unease and suspicion among them, but also by the inexplicable occurrences that were beginning to unfold with alarming regularity. Derek was the first to volunteer for the night's watch, his usual reticence replaced by a strange fervor. While the rest of the group huddled in their sleeping bags, sleep eluding them despite their fatigue, Derek sat near the dying embers of the fire, his silhouette a dark sentinel against the cabin's gloom. That night, the storm sang a different song, its howling winds interspersed with the rhythmic scratching that had now become a dreadful part of their ordeal. Time, in the unsettling quiet, seemed to stretch into a void, an abyss where the minutes trickled as slowly as the melting icicles outside their window. During Sarah's watch, under the weak glow of their last lantern, a spine-chilling sight met her eyes. Through the frost-touched window, she saw it. A figure, hulking and indistinct, prowled the edges of their visibility. It moved with an eerie grace, a monstrous ballet dancer in the swirling stage of the snowstorm. Was it the Wendigo, or was it her fear-spawned imagination? She shivered, the frosty cold gnawing at her bones less chilling than the fear that gnawed at her mind. She woke the others, her voice a shaky whisper, something's out there. Sleep vanished as her words sank in, each syllable a drop of ice in their hearts. They rushed to the window, their breaths held, their hearts pounding in erratic rhythm in the stifling silence. The figure had disappeared, swallowed by the storm's relentless curtain. But the seed was planted, the fear nurtured by their dire situation, sprouting into a gnarled tree of terror in their minds. The scratches against the wooden wall, the inexplicable movements within their supposed sanctuary, the dwindling rations, it all began to form a horrifying image. The Wendigo was no longer a creature of folklore, it had seeped from the pages of legend into their stark reality. Desperate to keep their fear at bay, they took turns at the watch, their eyes straining against the storm's veil, their hearts jumping at each gust of wind, each groan of the old cabin. Sleep, when it came, was fraught with nightmares, their dreams invaded by the Wendigo's terrifying presence. Through the long hours of their vigil, the cabin creaked and groaned under the storm's weight, each sound a spectral reminder of their predicament. Each passing day, each chilling incident, etched a deeper crack in the fortress of their sanity. Hunger gnawed at their bodies, fear gnawed at their minds, and the storm gnawed at their hopes, each a brutal reminder of the monster that was no longer just in their minds but lurking in the depths of their darkest fears. In the fragile light of the morning, the cabin was a scene of stillness, the storm's ferocity an echo in the background. Marcus, however, was missing from their huddled group. His sleeping bag lay empty, an unsettling testament to his sudden disappearance. A frantic search ensued, their calls for him swallowed by the storm's ceaseless symphony. His absence was a gaping void, his sudden disappearance a horrifying mystery. Had the Wendigo claimed him, their fears now a chilling reality. Accusations and suspicions were kindled, the fear that had been simmering beneath the surface now bubbled over. The pointing fingers once again found Derek, his behavior swinging wildly between defiance and fear. As the confrontation escalated, a struggle ensued, and in the chaos, Derek tumbled into the rustic fireplace. The brief scream that escaped his lips was swallowed by the storm's fury, his writhing body a grotesque dance in the heart of the flames. The aftermath was a haunting silence, the charred smell of Derek's demise a gruesome perfume in the enclosed space. Shock, grief, and an unbearable guilt clung to them like the smoke that filled their sanctuary. Their world had tipped into madness, their reality more horrifying than any tale of the Wendigo. With one of their own dead and another missing, the group was reduced to three. The room, once their haven, had become a horrific tableau. The gruesome sight of Derek's chard remains a monstrous specter. The fireplace, once a source of warmth and comfort, had become a chilling reminder of their grim reality. Through the numbness of shock, they cleaned the grisly scene, their actions robotic, their hearts heavy. Once done, they huddled together, their silence a shared grief, their eyes haunted by the horrors they had witnessed. That night, as they took turns to keep watch, sleep was an elusive phantom. The memory of Derek's horrific end, Marcus's mysterious disappearance, and the ever-present fear of the Wendigo kept them on a knife's edge. In the face of their terrifying ordeal, the lines of morality and survival blurred. The storm, their captive audience, continued its chilling performance, the Wendigo's legend a morbid undertone. 
Within the cabin's confined space, their world had shrunk to an unbearable reality. The horrifying turn of events a grim confirmation of their deepest fears. They were no longer just battling the storm, the cold, and the hunger, but also the nightmare that was rapidly spiraling into a terrifying reality. In the numbing silence that followed Derek's tragic demise, the remaining survivors found themselves grappling with a horrifying reality. The brutal battle for survival had taken a dark turn, their sanctuary now a grim reminder of their unspeakable act. Sarah, Audrey, and Liam, each trapped in their private world of guilt and fear, barely spoke. Their shared glances were haunted, the weight of their actions etched in their weary eyes. Each gust of wind, each flicker of their dying fire, was a harrowing echo of the nightmare that had unfolded. The food, already scant, seemed even more meager now. As they stared at the pitiful portions, a nauseating proposition slithered into their thoughts. Their minds recoiled at the idea, but their bodies, driven by a primal need to survive, considered the unthinkable. As the silence grew heavier and the hunger gnawed more insistently, their moral compasses began to falter. The boundary between humanity and savagery blurred as they succumbed to their desperate hunger. The decision was made in silence, their agreement passed in haunted glances. In the confines of the storm-battered cabin, they crossed a line, their actions echoing the very legend that had terrified them. The parallels were not lost on them, their grim choice a grotesque reflection of the Wendigo's origin. Night descended, a shroud of darkness veiling their unspeakable act. Sleep was a distant dream, their minds tormented by guilt, their bodies sustained by their horrific deed. The storm outside seemed to mourn their lost humanity, its howls a dirge echoing in the frigid air. Within the cabin's oppressive confines, they wrestled with their dwindling sanity. The tale of the Wendigo was no longer just a fireside horror story, it was becoming their chilling truth. As they stared into the flickering embers of their fire, the warmth a grotesque contrast to the cold dread within their hearts, they saw not just their distorted reflections, but the monstrous truth of their existence. In the grip of the relentless storm and the looming specter of the Wendigo, they had become something else. They had succumbed to a hunger as primal as the beast itself. Stripped of their veneer of civilization, they were stepping into a dark abyss, their humanity a fading light against the overwhelming darkness of their deeds. As the night stretched into the abyss of despair, the survivors confronted the monstrous transformation within themselves. Sarah, Audrey, and Liam sat in silence, each one lost in a whirlpool of guilt, horror, and fear. They had committed the unthinkable, their survival paid for with a currency of raw savagery. Their weary eyes no longer held the vibrant spark of human spirit. Instead, they reflected a haunted void, the blackened mirror of their souls echoing the horrifying tale of the Wendigo. They were no longer merely survivors, they were becoming something else, something as cold and ruthless as the storm that held them captive. Every rustling wind outside the cabin, every crunch of frost underfoot seemed to speak their guilt. Their refuge was now a prison of their own making the wooden walls whispering their secret, the firelight casting long, damning shadows. Audrey, the once vibrant local whose knowledge of the landscape was as detailed as a cartographer's map, was now a ghost of her former self. Her fiery spirit had dimmed, the lively spark in her eyes replaced by a vacant stare that bore the weight of their gruesome act. Sarah, the seasoned mountaineer who had faced nature's wrath unflinchingly, was now a fragile shell, her strength eroded by the cruel tide of their ordeal. And Liam, the jester of their group, was now a statue of silence, his vibrant humor snuffed out by the chilling reality of their survival. Sleep, when it came, was a fitful entity, their dreams a haunted landscape where the Wendigo roamed free, its monstrous figure a grotesque shadow of their actions. They woke from these nightmares with a start, their own breaths echoing like screams in the stifling silence of their cabin. As the line between human and monster blurred, they began to see the Wendigo not as a separate entity, but as a part of themselves. Its insatiable hunger mirrored their own desperate need for survival, its ruthless savagery a grim reflection of their actions. The Wendigo was not just a creature lurking in the storm, it was within them, born from their desperation and fear. They huddled together, seeking comfort in their shared guilt. Their conversations were hushed whispers, each word a fallen petal in the garden of their lost humanity. The Wendigo's legend had taken root in their reality, its monstrous visage a grotesque portrait of their transformation. In their struggle to survive, they had embraced the Wendigo. It was a haunting realization, a mirror held up to their faces that reflected the chilling truth. The monster was not outside in the storm. It was within them. 
It had always been within them. Their terrifying ordeal was far from over. It was only just beginning. In the heart of the relentless storm, their grim transformation complete, Sarah, Audrey, and Liam found themselves on the precipice of their sanity. The final strands of their humanity were as thin as the worn threads of their clothing, the warmth of the fire a feeble bulwark against their chilling reality. One night, as the storm performed its bone-chilling symphony, an unholy sound rose above it, a scream. A wail of such despair, it seemed to shake the very cabin walls. It was Liam. His sanity, worn thin by their ordeal, had snapped. In his eyes danced a horrifying reflection of the Wendigo. He lunged at Sarah, a wild desperation in his eyes, but Audrey intervened. The cabin became a battlefield, the fight a grisly dance in the flickering firelight. Sarah, driven by fear and a primal will to survive, fought back. Their struggle was a whirl of flailing limbs and animalistic snarls, their desperation a gruesome counterpoint to the storm's chorus outside. In the end, as the last dying embers of the fire bore witness, Liam lay still, his once vibrant eyes now vacant. A chilling silence followed the storm of their confrontation, their panting breaths the only testament to the battle that had unfolded. Then, the storm finally ceased. A curtain lifted to reveal a world blanketed in a deafening silence. The morning light filtered through the frost-laden window, casting long, haunting shadows within the cabin. Two survivors, their humanity a mere memory, faced the aftermath of their struggle. Sarah and Audrey emerged from their cabin, their bodies trembling from the biting cold and the grim reality of their survival. The world outside was a frozen testament to their horrifying ordeal, the untouched snow a stark contrast to the battle that had taken place within their shelter. Their eyes met, two mirrors reflecting their shared guilt and haunting despair. In their struggle for survival, they had danced with the Wendigo. They had let it in, allowed it to take root within their souls, and paid the price with their humanity. With the storm's end, the terrifying grip of the Wendigo's legend began to recede, leaving in its wake a chilling echo of their grim transformation. They had survived, but at a cost that would haunt them forever. The mountaineers were gone, replaced by the grim specter of their survival. They had faced the storm, danced with the Wendigo, and emerged as something else, survivors bearing the monstrous scars of their ordeal. They were left with a chilling truth. The Wendigo was not just a creature of legend. It was within them a terrifying reality born from their desperation and fear, a grim revelation of their monstrous transformation. And there we have it, dear listeners. We've emerged from the relentless storm, our hearts pounding, our minds teetering on the edge of fear. Revelations of the Wendigo serves as a harrowing reminder that sometimes the real monster is not the creature lurking in the shadows, but the fear and desperation gnawing at our sanity. Survival has its cost, and it may be a price too chilling to bear. It has been a terrifying journey tonight, and as we part ways, remember, the world of our scary stories is not so far removed from our own. After all, horror lurks not just in the shadows, but within the depths of our own fears. Until our paths cross again in the twilight, good night and pleasant dreams. Or perhaps, thrilling nightmares. This is our scary stories signing off for tonight.